my channel. This is Tita Lovinia of Tita's of Pageantry. And for this episode, I will be giving you some quick updates on our very own Michelle Marquez D as she competes for Miss Universe in El Salvador this November. You might want to continue sticking around because if all of you are waiting for our live sesh for this Miss Universe season, this is the episode for you. I will be giving you instructions on how you can catch our 10-day live sesh for this season. So please make sure you stick around. Please subscribe to the channel as well as hit that bell notification button for your weekly pageant fix. Simple. It's Miss Universe. It's Miss Universe. Nothing less than excitement. Yeah. Well, well, well. What do you know? Here we are. We are in the middle of pageant season and it is now November. I know that you can feel the Miss Universe fever in the air. A lot of us have been waiting for this. This whole year, we have gone through pageant fatigue. We have gone through that crazy thing that happened in Vietnam and what you know the owner has been saying. But the thing is, we're back. Everything is balanced. I am absolutely thrilled to start November, you know, and start like becoming more active um, in checking out the pageant scene, especially Miss Universe, because, yeah, I mean, we've said so many things about Miss Universe, and I also have like strong opinions about Miss Universe, but at the end of the day, this is still Miss Universe country, and I am still a Miss Universe tita, and yeah, Miss Universe is my poison. So I'm really very happy to start this month for you. I will have information for you later on on how we will be uh, conducting our live sesh. But for now, let me just give you some quick updates on our very own Michelle D, because yeah, it's making me excited. So today is November 1st. Um, I hope that you guys have... You know, done your part in remembering your loved ones. And uh, yeah, it's pretty somber, but we have to go on. So let me go back at least a few hours. So yesterday, October 31st, was of course Halloween. And our very own Michelle Marquez D left for the U.S. first before embarking on her journey to El Salvador. So what was good about this departure was that it was really very different from the other girls from the standalone franchise. When Rabia, Bea, and Celeste left, it felt like they were, you know, doing this low-key thing. They were, like, keeping the girls from the fans and the media. So I'm I was pretty happy to see uh, quite a number of turnout for Michelle's departure. And for the departure, she had, of course, her supporters, she had her friends, uh, she had like members of the media to cover, and of course, she had the backup of Sparkle Management and GMA. So they were all there, and it was just so nice to see Michelle mingling with a lot of these people because when Michelle won the Nationals, one of the criticisms was that she seemed so distant, she seemed unapproachable, unattainable. And, you know, over the past few months, Michelle has worked on it gradually up until we started really seeing uh, visible improvements. First of all, her body now is just absolutely amazing. You know, clothes look really good on her now. Um, I think she also really made a conscious effort to lose weight and to tone up her body. We haven't really seen a lot of her passerella, but I'm sure that she understands that, you know, her passerella is something that we have been, you know, really noisy about. So I'm sure that she has polished that. But it's just so nice to see Michelle radiant, surrounded by people and really looking excited, um, not, you know, pouting or projecting this really edgy look. So it's just so nice to see her happy as she, you know, embarks on her Miss Universe journey. So let me move on to how she looked like because for at least our last two girls, Bea and um, Celeste, they were very secretive. They didn't really want 
a lot of fanfare and honestly that really hurt a lot of pageant fans because we couldn't access the girls and we couldn't really get some sound bites off of them and it felt that they were alienating a lot of the pageant fans so this time it's a little different um i guess because michelle was also backed up by gma and sparkle management and it also seemed that a lot of us felt that with michelle it's a lot lighter um i guess because there are two personalities from the organization that people aren't so happy seeing so every time they see these two personalities who would always like be on the spotlight it really raises eyebrows so i'm glad that you know the spotlight was just on michelle i mean i'm sure they are still part of the team um one of the personalities involved already left earlier and then of course um the creative director of miss universe philippines was also with michelle but he kept a bit of a distance and he wasn't as visible so i i i guess that kept all of the um like the mood lighter and more festive like of course we could not compete with the turnout um of people the same way they showed up for Antonia Porcel of uh, Thailand but just to see Michelle surrounded by a lot of fans uh, a lot of members of the media screaming her name screaming the Philippines and having like um the Philippine flag and a lot of like their visuals it's really nice it just gives us more of a boost in morale and why would it be such a boost in morale i mean have you seen her she has been experimenting on her short hairstyle so i really like the direction of you know slicking it back and then looking like really wet and really edgy she did mention that she wanted her wardrobe to reflect her personality and reflect it did what she wore for her departure was a custom dress taken from the um, summer collection of Filipino designer Vin Orias for his collection for 2024. Now they made it denim for Michelle and I really liked it because it had that school uniform feel. It had a bit of that Prada feel. It had a little bit of that Dior um silhouette. So it was really very feminine with the silhouette but there's hardness there's androgyny and there's that edginess that you know we all know that Michelle could definitely rock like this is definitely up her alley it's in her comfort zone to wear these things she did mention that she really likes leather she really likes denim and you know for a lot of pageant fans that could be you know something that would make them nervous but i'm really glad that she seems to be working with a lot of filipino designers who can balance masculinity and femininity so looking at her departure outfit with her bragais heels that were like barely there but you know really thin and really feminine that dress and she had jewel more jewelry there was um a pamana was it pamana it it's a it's a pin or a brooch that had a depiction of the philippine map i thought that was a really nice and subtle touch and i think that for michelle's journey at miss universe we will get to see lots of nice touches so, so yeah um from my understanding because i waited uh, for her arrival in la today november 1st she arrived this afternoon and i'm just really glad that she is safe she's doing okay she looked absolutely fresh flawless poreless even so yeah a lot of people are just really happy to see her um she has been dismissed by a lot of the latin admins a lot of the asian admins but i would rather that she stays underrated so that she could wow everyone I mean as early as now a lot of people a lot of admins from all over the world are already noticing her because I guess most of them are just really tired looking at someone who seems like an energizer bunny 
changing her outfits and you know having these outfits documented every day that it seems like there's no surprise anymore so a lot of them have you know given michelle like a second look and they're probably now going beyond her facial structure because a lot of them are like really pushing for it. it's still a beauty pageant but I don't know, you guys. If you have noticed, Michelle, she absolutely has bloomed. She is doing so well. She's so calm. She's so collected. And I'm just so glad that a lot of admins have picked up on her boy Abunda uh, appearance because this is our strongest card. Our girl is smart. She knows what she wants. She's very calm. She doesn't get rattled easily. And she's very smart. I already said that, right? But again, one of the things that I really like about Michelle this time, um, I'm just going to say that she is absolutely hands-on. I haven't seen a candidate this hands-on since Catriona. So if this is a really good indicator of Michelle making it to the top without as much hype, then yeah, definitely go for it. So if you're wondering... When will Michelle arrive in El Salvador? From my understanding, she will stay in LA for a couple more days, but she will leave on November 3rd in time for the registration of Miss Universe from November 4th up until November 8th, if I'm not mistaken. So there have been a number of ladies who have departed from their countries. But so far, the first one who arrived in El Salvador, as you all know, is Antonia Porcelt of Thailand. So yeah, let the games begin. Now, I will be moving on to our announcement because I know a lot of you have been asking me, Tita, go on live, go on live. I'm going to hold off on this a bit. So yes. This will be our schedule. I don't want to disrupt all of your schedule, so we will stick with the 9 p.m. schedule. So from November 5th up until November 7th, I will be doing your regular Miss Universe live coverage because by then we would have had materials because these girls would have completed their registration as well as some photo shoots in between. So yeah, we would have something to talk about. But I will be leaving for Cebu from November 8th up until the evening of November 12th. So we will resume our 10-day coverage from November 13th up until November 19th because the pageant is on November 18th. But that will be aired here by November 19th. So if you count 5 to 7, 13 to the 19th, 10 days. So don't worry if you get confused. I will be posting daily announcements as well as schedules on our community. And I cannot wait to see you guys. Like I cannot wait to get into fiesta mode and get into the whole Miss Universe fever for you. I don't have a lot of updates on Michelle yet. I'm just really happy that we're all on the same page. And for those who are doubting Michelle, go on doubting. <laughs> so there you go. I'll see you guys. Don't worry. We're going to do this. So thank you and goodbye. I am wearing Vin Araya's custom for me. It's so denim. Nice. I've always been a denim and leather fan. And I said that in my wardrobe, it really has to accentuate my personality, my branding. And we put in a lot of work, grab We were fitting for so, for so many days in a row, but I'm very confident in the wardrobe choice. Michelle, after so many years, you're going to be representing the Philippines on this universe. Super. Ngayon pa lang alam ko na dream come true, right? It is definitely years of hard work, years of dedication, blood, sweat, and tears, especially this year. Last year was really the hardest year of my life with my parents, with my father, my mother both getting into accidents, being able to persevere and win the crown. And finally, I was just telling my friends earlier that grabe, time just flies so fast. It, I, it feels like I just won the nationals last last night. And now I'm already flying to El Salvador, so grabe. I love Salvador. that you're wearing the Philippine of course. Uh, pin yes, on, your, Philippine on your chest. Of How course. much do you want to win this for the country? I want to win it wholeheartedly, 500%, 10,000%. Sobrang pinaghandaan yun. Pinaghandaan po, pinaghandaan ng buong Pilipinas. And obviously, I just hope that that shines in El Salvador. Wait, your fans have been waiting here for two I hours. I know, hello!